So, today's a snow day, so I thought, come on, get it together, you're gonna do this video. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess I do want to say that I might be kind of whispering, but it's only because my youngest is trying to take a nap, and we've been having some trouble napping, and I don't know why. Besides, maybe he's like getting teeth or something, I have no idea. But, I might just be kind of whispering, so I'm sorry. And hopefully the lighting is better today. It's like actually bright since it's like snowing. Um, but anyways, let's just get into the video. But I wanted to talk about, uh, I do have my trusty notes. So these tips pertain to new moms and experienced moms, pretty much any mother. Um, because I think that there becomes a point when we sort of forget about us because we're like dealing with the kids and the house and work whatever like th this can be for a working mother or a stay-at-home mother like I think anybody should like make sure that they make me time so I made some bullets all right so the first thing that I said like sort of pertains to more of the like very very new mom who's kind of in that stage of like holy crap what did I get myself into uh the thing is crying all the time and feeds all the time and is pooping and it's scary um so the one of the first things that I think that can totally help with your like mental health and just feeling kind of more your old self um or yourself whichever is uh t to take a shower like make sure like, this doesn't have to be, like, you know, the full-blown, like, do your hair, you know, blow dry, whatever. Like, but take, like, that five-minute, you know, body shower where you just, just get the soap and you just, ugh. Like, honestly, it feels so much better and, and you're going to feel better. Um, if you're, like, really new to the whole mom thing, uh, obviously having somebody watch the baby can help. But we don't always have that luxury. Um, but bringing baby in in like a rock and play or like some type of little sitting bassinet can totally like bring them into the bathroom with you. Can totally eliminate that problem of like I don't have anybody to watch them. They can just sit in there while you're taking a shower. It's completely fine. And you know they might even fall asleep because the shower is like calming. But I definitely think that we sort of forget to hygiene. Um, so like brushing your teeth, like that type of stuff. Another thing that I feel like a lot of like moms kind of don't like forget, but they don't, um, they don't really do this like they used to, I guess. So making a meal. So this means like you're, you've made a meal for your children and your family, whatever. Or maybe it's just your children, like maybe your husband's not there, but you sort of like just are snacking yourself or like barely even eating yourself because you're sort of forgetting that you also need to eat. And I think that as a new time, as a new mother, I remember almost forgetting sometimes and being like, oh my God, I'm like so hungry. But taking the time and making time too to make a proper meal, a proper lunch, a proper breakfast, proper dinner for yourself can really make a difference. Now, I think this is also why, like, sometimes, some people notice that when they become a mother, they gain all this weight, and a lot of it is because you're not eating correctly. You're picking, like, those meals that are, like, really, really easy to make, and I totally get it, like, I totally do, and I feel like those meals are fine once in a while, but it's like, once it becomes that everyday thing and it becomes, like, a habit, almost, of your routine, that's when things, like, start getting so this actually is my mother actually used to do this and so I've totally taken this on as well but it's setting aside time for everybody to be kind of doing something on their own so my mother used to call this silent reading which I remember like a lot as a child I never noticed or knew like why we actually did this until I had my own children and then I was like oh um Silent reading is definitely needed, but it's essentially where, and you can do this with any age child, I feel like. Obviously, if they're an infant, this is kind of more of like when they're napping, 
but it's when you're not with them you might be like they might be in another room and you're doing quiet alone things and this can be for like an hour two hours whatever it should be for at least an hour so in our house like we call it alone time like personal time so like once a day I try to make sure we have like one to two hours of this alone time where the kids aren't bothering me and I'm not bothering them and they're not bothering each other so Lincoln's usually napping Grant is either playing on his iPad or playing with some craft or something and I'm either like doing a video or watching TV whatever um, I know it sounds like it might be something hard to put into your routine but once it's there it's oh like it's it's good because it kind of lets you like recharge your batteries because I feel like especially as a stay-at-home mom like it's just this like constant kind of you know kids at you all the time and the silent reading helps kind of like get space and I've noticed too that now that we've like really put it into our routine is that silent reading is now what when silent reading you know like they'll ask for it because it's part of the routine and it also helps them recharge their batteries um, another thing is making time for you and your husband or significant other I think that's very important because I think it gets forgotten a lot and um, my husband and I definitely do not go out as much as we used to before we had kids but we try to go out like mm, every couple of weeks sometimes it's only once what sometimes it's only once a month but hey we at least try to make it happen um spending time with other moms i think this is a big one i noticed that that was like really helpful for me and also spending time with friends like friends who either don't have children or friends that you had you know like before you had kids like i think that's important to try and keep those relationships and i know that that's really hard because sometimes when you have kids and then other friends that don't have kids, like you sort of stop becoming friends. And that is sort of like a natural kind of process that happens. But I think it's important to have a friend who is somebody who you can kind of still be that like old self with slash like your new self. It's still okay to be with as well. Um, I mean, I have a best friend that we see each other every couple of weeks or you know we talk pretty much every day but like um, we don't actually see each other as often as we used to but when we do see each other it is pretty much like you know we haven't like we've never parted at any time um, and it she's also a good resource and um, you know helps kind of recharge my batteries and I think I help recharge her batteries or at least I hope um, yeah Okay, uh, oh, have a trusty sitter. And I think this is important because I feel like there are times where you're like, oh my God, I need to go like do something by myself, like grocery shop, Christmas shop, um, I don't know, whatever it is. And I think it's really important if you have that good sitter who can like actually watch the kids and you know you're not gonna have that problem of, uh, actually something came up and like I can't, you know, that's no fun. Um, Another thing to keep in mind is don't be too hard on yourself. I feel like as parents, we definitely judge each other and we're like super hard and critical of just ourselves. And I think we need to be more lenient because there it's okay to have days where you're like in your pajamas and not wearing makeup. But I think you also need to have days where you're not doing that too. But then again, you know it's you're not gonna you're not gonna die like it's fine like um, there will be a point in your life when things will kind of start being normal they're never gonna go back to what they were like before you had kids but it'll become a new normal and I think we just need to not be so hard on ourselves because we're doing our best um, also trying not to compare yourself to others I know that that's super hard I feel like especially with social media it's so hard like not to compare yourself with other people but I think trying to be mindful and keeping that um, you know in the back of your mind obviously it can really help um, 
so another thing like doing one thing a week for just you that can it really depends like sometimes that's a hard thing to do sometimes it's not but I do think it can be helpful like I recently took up a yoga class um, and my husband was looking into um, karate classes um, you know obviously with the holidays it's a little bit like now it's kind of too hectic to have something extra but I do think it's kind of important to have that like thing that's just sort of yours um, utilize the help from others so I I guess what I meant by that is like uh, grandparents or friends people who have offered help being like I can help you watch the baby or I can come over or okay so apparently my camera stopped recording which seems to happen a lot anyways um, so utilizing help from others so I think that there's a lot of people I know when I had um, Grant or first that they like wanted to help out and it was kind of this thing where I sort of felt like I didn't need their help or like I shouldn't accept it because um, you know I can do this on my own but utilize their help I think it's super important like it, you know if they're like hey can we watch the kids or um, you know what are you up to like you know do you need any help yes like I think it's important to accept that help because um, it doesn't mean that you're weak, it doesn't mean that you don't know what you're doing, none of that. Like, it just, help is a good thing. Um, and the last thing I wanted to say is that it's okay to be upset. And I think as a mother, you're going to be upset a lot. Because it's very overwhelming, it's very hard sometimes, it's very, like, sweet and awesome and good. But then there's also times where it's like, really difficult and you're like oh my god are we ever gonna get over this phase like it's something that they don't teach you in school like how to be a parent or how to um, deal with the emotions of being a parent and I think that that's horrible because I think that um, we should be teaching that types of things just how to um, accept this new kind of role that you're doing and how to utilize husbands and significant others in like a positive way and um, you know how to have a good and like structured routine and you know family orientation like whatever it is like I just think that a lot of people go into parenthood completely blind which I did as well and I think that you can't really like prepare yourself fully for it. You can't, but you know, it might be more helpful if we had like some more support. Um, so that's just kind of, you know, my tips, obviously like, you know, there's probably tons of other ones, but I do think that um, one of the biggest ones is that we really don't need to be so hard on ourselves and that we do our best that we can. And that's all we should be doing is our best. And um, I really hope that this video helped you. Um, and if you have any other requests or anything, please leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and give this video a like if you liked it. And I'll know to make more like this. But thanks so much for watching.